Good evening, YouTube family. Tio here with Simplistic Fishing tonight. Back at you with some hot spots and Google waypoints. This time we're going to South Central Texas. We're going to be looking at Richland Chambers Reservoir. I've been there five or six times. Really enjoy the lake. Caught some really good quality fish there. Lennon also did well there in the last tournament we were down there at. I believe him and Jackson finished seventh um, out of 170 something boats. So a really good lake, lots of fun. Learn some patterns while we're down there, and I'll share them with you as we go through these Google waypoints. So stick around, got some great stuff for you. All right, so let's jump into this thing. Let's talk about these Google waypoints for Richland Chambers. A couple things I want to point out before we get started. I'm going to split this up into, I believe, a four-part series. We'll see how it goes with the uh, Navionics. I might be able to get that into one video. But with all the uh, the Google waypoints that I marked on here, this thing took me forever. I probably spent five to six hours marking points, weed lines, and things like that. This is a great lake to fish, so I want to make sure you guys can take full advantage of it. And, uh, you know, I'm selfish myself. I'll use all these points as well. So just sharing what I've what I've done but let's draw a line basically about right here and we're gonna we're really gonna look at anything south of that bridge we're not gonna go over here to the uh, to the west we're not gonna go north we'll do that on the next videos uh, the second one will be over the second part of these Google waypoints so let's go ahead and just start down here by the dam we'll work our way up to the bridge then we'll work our way down a little bit and then we'll just kind of stay down this uh, this line so a couple other things I want to point out when we're talking about these waypoints you're gonna notice that I marked a lot of things called weed lines and then I marked them called stick ups and pretty much those are the same things. Um, the only reason why I made them weed lines is because they were very, very defined. So if I put stick ups, that was just like a group of stick ups that didn't really have a defined line. But if I put a weed line, that's basically the stick ups that had a very defined line, something that you could really set up on really nicely. So you'll see it as I go through here. Um, the other thing is the best image that I could find when going through here was really um, November of 2014, I believe. So I'll take us back to November of 2014. And that's what we're going to use to find the uh, the golden nuggets on this lake. So starting down here uh, in the corner of the lake, south corner of the lake, I did notice that there's some rock that's coming off of this point. This is some very deep water in here. This is a restricted area here, but over in here there's not. And you can tell there's a somewhat of a high spot there. Something's going on here and there's some rock here. So this would be a good area to look at. Uh, the other thing is I noticed that there's water coming out of here. And I, for whatever reason, I've been over here, you know, like I said, I fished this like four or five times, maybe six times. Um, but I've never noticed water coming out of there. I never even noticed that was an area where water was an output. But anytime you see an output flow of water coming into the lake, whether it be a pipe, a sewage drain, or something, you know, as significant as this, it's definitely got to be a hot spot to take a look at, take out, you know, to really sit, try and fish around. There's a lot of oxygen in that area and everything else. There's a lot of bait fish that get uh, grouped up in those areas. So those are always good areas to take a look at. So then moving on up here, the, this is really interesting up here in this corner. There's a really big high spot here, and this is some deep water over here on the edge of this. I can't remember what the exact depth was, but it was it was pretty deep. And you've got a pretty significant weed line right here. You've actually got some kind of an old road bed. I believe we've even marked up here where there's a road bed that comes through here, right in here. And then you've got this really good weed line here with all of these stick ups. Now, one thing when we started fishing chambers um, last year, you know, we didn't really know what we were doing. We never fished that lake before. So we were all trying to figure out the patterns. And you know me, if you've watched any of my videos, I love to fish rock. So the first thing we did is we went out and we looked for all the rock on this lake. And we, we did pretty successful. In fact, that's how they did uh, in that tournament. They they won a lot of the, or they got a lot of those fish off the rocks. But um, the key was, I think, is that the key was the stick ups in this lake. There's stick ups everywhere. And we kind of missed it the first couple times we were down there. And as we started to learn the lake a little bit more, we realized, oh, wow, if you find the stick ups, you find the fish. So you're going to see where I have spent a lot of time really trying to identify uh, those spots for you to check out. This one, I did put a high spot. I didn't mark the weed lines, but hey, this could be a good place to go up there and just flip around that brush and pitch into there and things like that and see what you can find all right so moving on we've got this significant road bed we talked about comes right in here you've got a nice little channel that comes in here and then another high spot up in here and then if we go back in here we really start to see what i was talking about earlier where those sticklets make a really defined line um, so here you can see a real defined line 
I love it. It's got really good drop off here and then you've got a ditch in here as well. So all really good areas to take a look at. This road bed is up here as well. So take a look at that, you know, fish around that area. See if you can find any hot spots in that area. And you've also got a pond dam that's right up here. So these are always really good hot spots. Sometimes these pond dams on the shallower ones uh, might not be as attractive as some of the ones you can find in a little bit deeper water. But pond dams are always a good place to fish. So take a look at the pond dams, fish around the dam, fish around these stick ups on the other side. Um, could be some good areas to find some fish. All right, and then moving on, we'll talk about these different high spots as we go into the Navionic side. So remember, we're just talking about things that we're finding uh, from Google Earth. So another thing I found here, another really significant weed line, you got all this just stick ups and stuff like that, but notice it's just, it's huge. I mean, there's so much you couldn't possibly fish all of that. It'd take you forever. But if you looked at the sections of this that are really healthy and they're really grouped together, those are the ones where I call them weed lines and I group them together. And this is a very significant one. You got a really nice good turn here, some good ambush points for them to set up in and some really thick brush for them to set into. So take a look at that. I like the location of that as well. If we look at that, you know, in normal weather, that thing's kind of just out here. You don't realize there's that huge flat out here and that's just right on the edge of it. So really good, good area there. I, I see that as being a pretty good hot spot. All right, then moving in here, we've got the, uh, the road bed that goes in here. You've also got some weed lines through here that I marked for you guys. There's a saddle in here as well. So take a look at that. You can see it kind of goes down right here. Nice flat point that comes out. Another good weed line up in here and a good road bed over in here as well as some more significant weed lines around this corner so uh, this all looks really good you know the first time that i went out and did the google waypoints on this i really didn't mark much i couldn't find any rock i couldn't really find too many things to uh you know to hone in on but that was before i really knew the pattern of this lake and the pattern of this lake is pitching those stick ups and and working that that buck brush really a, a ton and it's not even buck brush it's more just like these stick ups that come out i can't even explain what they are you guys are probably laughing at me to live in texas all your life but they're just sticks little bitty sticks that come up out of the water and it's, they're great things to fish and if you can get on that pattern it is fun 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 all right so moving on up found some more weed lines up here in this corner really good and then some more over here some weed lines here this is an actually an old pond so you've got a pond dam somewhere in here probably right around here somewhere and then you got the old pond in here so these are all really good areas probably got a little deep spot there compared to everything else around it then we're going to move on up the shoreline here and really i was just looking for rocks um, boat ramps and these weed lines so you're going to see i marked these weed lines a ton got more weed lines here and then if we move around this point, everything kind of looks normal. Well, I like that little crease right there. I didn't even think about that though. It didn't mark it, but maybe check that out. That could be like a nice little ditch to fish. And then you got a good weed line right here as well. And then we're gonna move back here. And here we've got another good pond. This one is actually holding water. So you know that this is a pretty deep area right here, right in front of this dock. Uh, so probably a good place to fish. You've got a pond dam here with a little bit of brush or something going on. You've got all these stick ups right around the edge and make it a nice, uh, weed lines, so all kinds of good stuff going on in that area. Then I'm going to move on back out of here, and we talked about that weed line, I believe, but if not, there's another weed line there. And then we've got some shallow rocks that are on this point. So if we were on that rock pattern, you know, this would be a good area to maybe get up parallel or get really close to that bank line, throw some square bills, things like that. You might have some success in that area. We've also got a boat ramp over here. And then another significant weed line that comes over here. This one looks really good. There's a pretty decent drop between where those weed lines stop and where the uh, the water is. So real significant. And then of course, you know, looking at this when the water is more at full pool, it actually might even be a little flooded here. Um, you can see, you can see the weed line barely, but I think if you were in a boat, you wouldn't really understand that there was really significant weed line there. So use these to your advantage and set up on them, set up parallel to them and fish you know down the weed lines right on the edges of them and then also flip into the, that stuff too so you've got a couple different patterns that you could use there but I guarantee you're going to have success, success doing that um, we've also got another ditch back in here you can see that's pretty significant and then a real good weed line that was on this little corner right here so take a look at that then moving on we've got more weed lines here significant ones significant ones here as well oh that is wild significant ones here as well and then moving on down through here 
we've got more weed lines on this area as well as right in through here and then we've got a nice road bed coming through here so I'd say you know if you're summertime fishing we've got some points around here this all looks pretty good and you've got a road bed that comes through here so take a look and see if that road bed comes out in here there could be some structure or something around there that you could fish maybe some lay downs or brush piles or something out in this area possibly I can't see it right now because the lake's just not far enough down for us to be able to see it then we've also got weed lines here as well we've got weed lines in this area too and then weed lines right here then if you look really closely on this point a little bit of a brush pile or a stick up or something but it's all kind of by itself it's got another one right over in this area too so those are always good areas to check right off of a point kind of out in a little bit deeper water not crazy deep water but definitely off the bank a little bit uh, could be a good area to check out then as we move up here, we're going to see more weed lines. This was a little bit sparse, so I kind of just marked these kind of randomly, but you got a nice little patch here. You got a couple little patches there, and then you got a really good one right here. But again, take a look at these. Got some more weed lines back in here that you can fish around. You got that road bed right here, and then you've got a nice little weed line that kind of sets up on that road bed. So you got a hard surface and then stick ups. That could be a good area to fish just right in that circle, right in that area. And then you got the road bed coming out here. Then we're going to move on back up here. We've got some more weed lines coming through here. And then this is amazing. They don't hide it very well, but check out this brush pile. You crappie fisher are probably like, yeah, yeah, bonus. Hey, there's bass in here too, boys. If those crappie are there, the bass are there too, because the bass love them crappie. So go after it. This looks like a great brush pile. I think this is a place I actually wanted to check out in the tournament. Landon didn't want to go that far back there to check it out, but I was telling him, man, that's got to be a good spot. So go back here, check it out. Let me know if that brush pile treats you good. The other thing I noticed that was really significant here is this tree line was very uh, straight, you know, very defined. So I went ahead and marked it. One, because when you're coming back here, you can kind of avoid that tree line. But two, if you were on a, a, a tree pattern, first say you were, you know, and the, the trees were working, that'd be a really good line to work down. Um, you know, get you on a medium diver or a square bill, depending on how deep that is, and bounce it off those trees. And, uh, you know, you might be able to pick up some pretty good fish in there. And then if that was working, you could go back and fish more of the timber. But anyways, just wanted to mark that tree line for you guys to, one, make sure you avoid it with your boat. But two, um, could be a good fishing opportunity as well, depending on the season and time of year and things like that. This weed line over here was really significant, so I could see this being good too. Looks really, really good. Some good stick-ups to fish and things like that. And then again, we've got these road beds that just go all over this lake. There's another one that comes right through here. You can see it. It's just barely defined. So there could be some good stuff around that road bed. Those are always good, good hard spots, good fish attracting spots. You got another one that comes through here. This road bed comes straight across. We talked about it. It also comes right through here too. So good areas to take a look at. You know, we're, we're right in kind of pre-spawn, uh, maybe a little post-spawn and spawn. Um, and if you look at these, these are great little secondary spots to stop at. So they can be coming in here, you know, maybe stop out here, feed up on the shell beds, then move back down this weed line, and they hang out here for a couple of days, eat some shad, and next stop is boom, they're on this road bed. So these can be good spots to stop at. So take a look at them. Weed lines here as well. And then we're going to move on up here. And we're going to find a whole bunch more of these weed lines. Some really defined ones in this area. This one was really defined. So I went ahead and marked it for you guys. This one was defined as well. And the nice thing about this is you got a little pond dam coming up here as well. So you got kind of two for one in that area. You've got other really significant weed lines back in this little pocket or cove. And some more that are in this area too. So I just went ahead and marked all these for you guys. So again, you know, this one, you can spend an hour just going down here and flipping all this stuff and you're probably gonna catch some fish so good stuff rich and chambers is a great lake got some big fish too some more pond dams back in here another pond dam in here some good opportunities to flip some stick ups there as well and then you've got the old pond that's there so another good area right by the dock too so you got a lot of good things working in that area and then you do have some really shallow rock all around this point so I went ahead and marked it Again, you know, we, we actually did good on the rock pattern, believe it or not. Maybe it's because it's something so different that nobody else was fishing it. But uh, the rock pattern does work on this lake during certain times. I believe that was in the fall uh, when we had that tournament. So shallow rocks all along here. 
Also got some really significant weed lines in here. And if you really wanted to get technical, you could probably get in here and mark all this stuff. That, that might be an old pond or something. It kind of looks interesting, but you've got these really defined lines all right in through here. And man, if you could, if you could hone in on where those lines were, you could have some success there as well. You've got more shallow rock around this point right here that you can see. Got another old pond here and a pond dam, kind of the opening where the pond dam is. And you got more shallow rock right along this bank line too. You can barely see it, but it's there. So some good stuff. All right, and then going back in here, I didn't mark this, but there's a pretty good weed line right there too. Um, I th there were so many different weed lines to mark. I don't think I could mark them all, but uh, I would definitely check this one out. You know, this one looks looks like it could be decent. So check it out. I didn't mark it, but uh, you'll see that I marked a whole bunch of other stuff. So again, we're going to go into part two and we'll talk about this northern side and really the western side. But let's go on and down and let's finish this thing. We're going to head back south again. So we've got some another good weed lines right over here by the dam. That I believe you guys will want to check out. And again, be careful on this lake. There are stumps all over the place. Like here you see, you know, everything's fine. And all of a sudden you got a group of trees. So just, just be careful when you're fishing around uh, this lake. Didn't see too much back in this area as far as things that I would be attracted to fish. But I did see a boat ramp back there. And there are some shallow rocks right up here along this shoreline. So all good areas. Rocks are always good places to find those fishies. All right. And then moving on down. Got another good weed lines right in here, right by a dock too, so that's always good. Got an old boat ramp or an old road bed right there, so that might be a good place to scan if you're looking offshore, kind of pull off there and look at that road bed that comes through there, see if there's anything good on there. Might come right up by that point, so that could be even better. We'll check it out on Navionics, and I'll let you know what it looks like on that. We got some good riprap coming around here. We did catch some fish in here, so this is a good area to catch some fish on the rock pattern. Uh, some shallower riprap. There's not a lot of depth here, but still is a good place to catch fish. And then going back in here, we've got some more boat ramps. And the thing that I found interesting about this lake is, you know, we're, we're up top. We see all those laydowns, or not the laydowns. We see all the stick ups and the weed lines and things that we're talking about. When we get down here on the south side of the lake, the terrain kind of changes a little bit. We kind of get into a little bit more rocks. And then I was really surprised when I got farther back into this cove, how many laydowns were in here. And this can be really, really good for bass fishing. If you're on a laydown pattern and you find that, there's not a lot of laydowns that really stick out. Out, uh, from Google Earth, but right here, I mean, you've got four different laydowns you can fish. Uh, really good piles. You got one back here, you got one here, and on top of that, they're on um, curves or bends in the creek channels. So you've got some creek channel bends with some brush. This one, not as much. That one definitely. This one's coming right off of a, of a bend. And this one is kind of out in the open, but you got some really good brush to fish around here. So this could be a really good area to fish. Something totally different, different pattern than everybody else might be fishing, but could be some good honey holes way back in there. All right, then moving on, uh, did see a pond dam over in here. So you've got some stick ups again, and then you've got the nice pond and the pond dam that comes over here. And these pond dams, you can get on a pond dam pattern too. So don't, uh, don't overlook the pond dams, especially come summertime. All right, weed lines more here. Mark to some more to take a look at. Those are really well defined. And then, like I said, part two, we're going to cover uh, going west and we'll take a look at that. So now let's move on and let's go to the south side. All right, so we got more weed lines here. We've got additional weed lines coming through here as well. And then didn't see too much back in here. You know, just really, really shallow pockets. Um, this thing's pretty interesting how they dug this out, but I didn't see anything in there that was worth fishing, but still pretty interesting how they dug it out. Then if we come up in here, we do start to see some more rocks. So I told you we start seeing more rocks in the terrain. Notice the terrain is it's getting a little bit different for some reason. So we've got some shallow rocks all along this bank line here. <clears throat> and then if we move back down here, we've got some brush along this bank. Or sorry, right outside of this dock. It's kind of hidden but you can see the shadows of it there's some pretty good brush right in here so probably good brush pile again you crappie fishermen let me know how that works out because if you're catching crappie on it i can catch some bass on it so i'd love to love to go down there and check it out probably be a while before i get to go to chambers again we also have some chunk rock down here it's a little bit deeper it's got a little bit more depth to it a little bit wider than most of the stuff we were seeing i believe we did catch some fish in this area and there are some big rocks right here by this dock so this would be a primary area to look especially if you're on a, a dock or a rock pattern you got some more rocks along this area too 
we'll move on down. Next thing we're looking at, we got some more chunk rock right in here along this bank line. You've also got a boat ramp. Some more rock along that boat ramp too. That rock actually goes along this whole bank line right in here. So lots and lots of rocks. And then uh, moving on here, I didn't see too much along these bank lines. There's some scattered rock right in here. Uh, but I did mark that there was rock along the bank line there, and it kind of just continues as you're going down through here. So if you're on the rock pattern, just keep hitting those those different points that come out. Each one of them have rocks on it. There could be shell beds off the edge of this one. This one looked interesting. Um, got some hard spots out here. Uh, got an underwater point that kind of comes up. Um, it's got deeper water access. This might be a good area to check out. This could be a good area that they would be attracted to. And then we're going to move on up here. Saw some additional stuff. Didn't see too much back in these coves. Really that attracted me. It kind of gets a little bit boring when you get up in here. Um, but I did notice this and this looks good. This is a really good long point that comes out. Main lake access out here. And just by the color of it and just looking at it, it looks pretty hard. Like it's got some hard surface to it. So it could be shell beds. Could just be a good point to fish. Uh, number one, I mean, it's a big shallow flat that comes out off the point. So it's got to be good. But definitely an area that you would want to, uh, to take a look at if you're fishing this area of the lake. Didn't see too much in regards to these docks. You know, just kind of a boring little cove. But when we get down in here, did find some ditches down in here. So this is a really good ditch or a weed line. This thing looks pretty good. You might want to check this out, especially come springtime. This could be a good area to find old Big Bertha hanging out, you know, four to eight foot of water just off the bank line. Everybody else is pitching the bank line. You're still fishing shallow, but you're just a little bit deeper than everybody else. So we've got some stick ups back in here too. These were really thick. I didn't even mark it as a weed line because they were so thick. Um, and then out here, another good, really hard area coming off this point. You've got uh, possible shell beds that are out in here. And then you've got some, I don't know if this is a drop or not. It kind of looks like a, maybe like a little bit of a drop, maybe, you know, a foot, two foot, but those can be really good areas for the fish to get attracted to in those little, little drops like that. So take a look at that area. I think that'll be good for you. And then we're going to move on down. They had some tires that were in here. I'm not sure what that's all about, but you see that here in Texas, you'll see these tires all over the place. We got some tires here and you got some really good rocks here. This is where that terrain's getting starting to get real different starting to see rocks on all these points you got rocks on this point you got rocks around this point this docks the docks even got a little bit of brush around it as well and then we get up in here we've got some pretty good weed lines right there i didn't mark those i think i was actually tired of marking weed lines by now but that could be a decent one to take a look at you've also got some rocks here um, along this point that comes out but then you've got some stick ups too so some pretty good weed line right here and then I just put check here because I don't know what this is. I can see that there's maybe some debris down here, um, but something's going on in this circle and that looks like a really hard spot right there on top of it. So check that out. That could be good. You know, everybody might be fishing up here and little do they know their boat's sitting right on top of the best honey hole that's out there. So take a look at those. Um, also come down here and take a look at these rocks. There's all kinds of like scattered rocks. There's a little bit of chunk rock here, or I guess you could just say bigger rocks, not really chunk rock. And then you've got these this point that comes out, shallow point, that's got a hard spot out here on the edge. So probably some shell beds out in this area. You've got some scattered chunk rock all along in here. You've got some more scattered rock along in here. I keep saying chunk rock, it's really just rock. Scattered rock here as well. You got some more significant stick ups back here by these docks. Uh, could be good. You got some more right in here, this too. And then you've got, you know, another point here. I didn't mark this because there wasn't anything on here really to, to mark. But, you know, sometimes, especially in the fall, these little points like this that come out and they're shallow and they, they have deep water access up here, but they get shallow. Uh, these can be really good. So all these, I mean, I wish Hubbard had these. I would be all over those things for sure. Uh, got some more scattered rock on these. Scattered rock here, scattered rock there. Scattered rock everywhere. So rock pattern, you know where I'm going. I'm heading to this area of the lake for sure. Got another hard spot, hard spot over here off of this point. Could be really good for shell beds or just flat out fish. I mean, those, those long, long flat points, I love them. Uh, you got a really good pinch point here too. So sometimes these can be good. You know, if the fish are coming in and out of here, maybe they're coming in and higher here to spawn or something like that. This could be a good area for them to stop at or to stage at, especially maybe like right in here. So it's close to that pinch point. They can ambush some stuff. So take a look in this area. There's a boat ramp back in there. And, you know, just some more hard surfaces in here. This all looks really interesting. 
Um, and then moving over here, we've got some more hard spots off of another point that comes out. With this one, actually looks like it might even have a little bit of a ledge to it. And then moving back in here, we've got another ditch or a weed line that you could look into. A boat ramp here to fish. You've got some more scattered rock that's over in here. So if you're on that rock pattern, that could be good. And if you're on the flipping pattern, all these stick-ups, all this stuff is good. Good, good weed line going back in here, back to this marina. Looks really healthy. And then you've got some rocks up in here too, uh, coming around there. And then that really takes us back. Oops, sorry. I thought we were back to the dam. Almost back to the dam. That takes us over here close to the dam. Where some more stick-ups back in here. There's some, some back in here too that you could fish. Um, I thought maybe I was going to mark that for rocks, but that looks like a swimming area or something. You can't get in that area, so can't go back there and fish those rocks. But again, we got these, these points that are coming out that look like they have some hard surface on it. This one actually has uh, some debris on the top of it. I can't tell if it's rocks, shells, what it is, but uh, it's definitely a place that you'd want to check out. So it comes out, got real good access to deep water and a nice real high spot there so it could be a great spot to fish and then uh you know me always like fishing the dam go and check the dam out see if it's any good doesn't look like it has a lot of chunk rock on it i can't remember last time if it did or not it might be one of those one of those that doesn't doesn't really look like it does so might not be a hot spot for me but always good to check out the dams you can never go wrong hey i'll be back with part two talking about that northern side and also uh, Patterson Lake, which is way back here off to the west, which I've heard a lot of good things about. And I got a surprise for you guys in the next video. I've added a little bit more to my Google Earth waypoints that I think will help you guys out. So please, if you can, if you like the video, please subscribe. Uh, hit that share button for me. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys like, what you don't like. And I'll be back soon to talk to you guys more about Rich and Chambers. Take care and tight lines.